My view is this, that there are fundamentals that the president ought to have taken into consideration even before you constitute your cabinet and you decide this is your economic direction. Failure to deal with those fundamentals is where we are. So it doesn't matter who you put there, put mm. an Einstein there, he will still fail. And what are the fundamentals? First, we're a poor country, very poor, with massive debt overhang. What do you do when you're poor? When you come in and then you have to do something. The first thing you do is you cut your coat according to your size. But we came in and the first thing is you bloat your cabinet, which means that the cost of governance is not going down. Everybody in this country expected that you should be able to shrink according to, even if you don't do everything, but at least. But now you have a runaway uh, cost of governance. Everything is being given to everybody free of charge. We are buying new play. We are doing all that. What do you expect? Those things must be paid for. What does the man on the street see? He sees you living in extravagance. That includes you. Of course it includes right. me. Okay. Yes. He sees you living, he sees you enjoying, and you're telling him things are getting rougher, and he's seen inflation, he's seen a cost of uh, fuel, he's seen the cost of electricity. So what do you expect? You, all you're going to get on the street is mass mm -hmm. anger. Many countries all over the world have shown time and again that leadership is not a rocket science. All you just need to do is to put the right people in place and the system will work for itself. All you just need to do is to have fundamentals and there is going to be massive development in the country. But it's quite unfortunate that in Nigeria, the politicians in this country makes leadership to look like one ecolong tax. And of course, whatever they do is deliberate because they want you to see leadership as one difficult tax so that whatever they turn out and give to you, you are going to praise them to high heaven. And that is what is happening in Nigeria. We praise our politicians for doing the tiniest of things while leaving the most important aspect of leadership. That's the reason why when you see any of Nigerian politicians talking about his achievement, all they focus on is building of road. During the 2023 general election campaign, Mr. Peter Obi did not lay much emphasis on infrastructure. He criticized the president, Muhammad Bari led administration for focusing so much on infrastructure. And some persons without foresight criticized him for sidestepping the importance of infrastructure. The reason why Mr. Peter Obi talked down on infrastructure is because infrastructure is not the key component of development. Of course, we all accept that infrastructure is good, but it's not something we should focus our mind on. You have to put infrastructure in place and then go about doing the key component of development. Just barely two years after that election, Nigeria is on the brink of collapse. Nigeria and Nigerians are experiencing a rough patch. We are going through the most difficult part in our history. And you are going to ask yourself, what then is the importance of all those infrastructure that President Muhammad Buhari focused his entire eight years of his administration on? President Muhammad Buhari was being praised for renovating our airports and building of railways. How many of you have made use of those airports and railways today? You can't make use of them because transportation is so high. The reason is because President Muhammad Buhari did not focus on the key fundamentals of development. While Tinubu was campaigning, he said, I'm going to continue from where President Muhammad Bari stopped. And of course, he has kept to his promise and he has continued on that same trajectory of not focusing on the key fundamentals of development that Nigeria desperately needs. Just like Senator Einaya Abaribe said, we are a poor country. It's not that Nigeria is poor. Nigeria has vast human and mineral resources, but we are not utilizing it very well. Nigeria is in huge debt. Having over 133 million of our citizens living in multi-dimensional poverty. 133 million out of 218 million citizens means 61% of Nigerians are living in multi-dimensional poverty. When you hear multi-dimensional poverty, it simply means those that lack money, those that lack access to good basic infrastructure, those that lack education. 
and there are also percentage of people that has education they have access to some infrastructure but they still lack money that means if you sum it all over 80 percent of nigerian citizens are poor this percentage was less nine to ten years ago and of course it was also less 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 years ago the number increased exponentially ever since APC came to power in 2015 and this all boils down to lack of leadership and basic fundamentals of governance. The 2023 general election was an opportunity for Nigerians to fix the colossal failure of President Muhammad Dubari by electing someone with key fundamentals, someone with vision, someone with direction to change the country. They ended up with President Bola Metinibu, a man with no promise, a man with no manifesto, a man with no direction, a man with no clear cut vision on how he's going to run the country. President Bola Metinibu came on board, told the people to endure the hardship, told them to fasten their seatbelt, told them that it's going to be a rough path, but that at the end of the day, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And Nigerians did not ask him how. One year, five months of his administration, his government is overtaking President Muhammad Dubari eight years of administration as the worst that this country has ever experienced. Every month of Tinubu administration, it keeps getting worse and worse for Nigerians and Nigeria. Lack of basic fundamentals. Few days ago, President Bolamir Tinubu reshuffled his cabinet and fired some persons while appointing new persons. Firing and reappointing of new cabinet members will not solve the problem in this country. The problem is coming from Bola Metinibu himself because he lacked direction, he lacked a clear cut fundamentals on how to run Nigeria. A poor country like Nigeria living in huge debt has no business in wasteful spending. This is what President Bola Metinibu has engaged himself in ever since he took over power. Excessive lavish spending. Look at the amount of money they are spending on the National Assembly. Look at the amount of money they are spending on the judges. Look at the amount of money President Bola Metinibu is spending on himself and his cabinet. Bola Metinibu has focused his attention on satisfying the politicians that helped him to become president. And of course, it is politicians and those elites that help him to become president, not Nigerians. Nigerians did not vote for Bola Metinibu. You have someone like Yeso Wike, who was the former governor of River State. In his state, he rigged River State for Bola Metinibu. You have the National Assembly members that are helping Bola Metinibu to borrow money without due process. They approve budget for the purchase of over $150 million presidential jet. And of course, you have the judges that are allegedly loyal to the president, the judges that allegedly overturn the constitution in order to ensure that Bola Metinibu become the president. Judges that did not rule on Bola Metinibu alleged criminal past as a heroine drug trafficker in the US and someone that allegedly forged his certificate. They are getting all the benefit of Bola Metinibu becoming the president, whereas the main people that are supposed to be benefiting directly from the government are not benefiting anything from this government. All they have been getting is hardship, pains and complaints. If Tinibu is serious about governance, the first thing he would have done upon resumption in office is to cut the cost of governance. Reduce allocation to the National Assembly. Reduce allocation to your cabinet. Cut down the size of your cabinet. But President Bola Metinibu went ahead to increase the number of cabinets that we experienced under President Muhammad Buhari. As a president, the National Assembly is purchasing 160 million SUV. The National Assembly is taking home 21 million naira every month. And the president is okay about it. As a president that is experiencing economic crunch in your country, you are buying a $150 million presidential jet. You are using 21 billion naira to renovate the office of the vice president. You are building houses and buying cars for the judges without putting anything to boost the economy. President Bola Metinibu is doing all of this after complaining that he inherited a battered economy. There is no sign to show that President Bola Metinibu inherited a battered economy because his expenditure, his wasteful spending has shown that he has massive resources at his disposal. They are trying to blame the past administration for the woes that we are experiencing today. Whatever we are experiencing today could have been copped, could have been stopped if the presidency was sensible in their spending. 
It is clear that President Bola Metinibu is responsible for what Nigerians are experiencing today. Sacking and reshuffling the cabinet is not the major problem. The major problem is the president. He lacks foresight. He lacks basic fundamentals of governance. He has no direction. There is no vision. APC and Tinibu does not have a clear-cut plan for Nigerians. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.